Hello and welcome to Autodesk Simulation TV, Simulation in Action. Today we are doing MES Contact, specifically dropping your product. My name is Mike Fiedler. I'm one of the product support engineers here at Autodesk and I'll be walking through this particular topic with you today. So going down to our slides here, uh, the problem description. The exercise is going to look at performing a mechanical event simulation, MES drop test, uh, with a plastic cup onto a shelf and then ultimately onto a floor. So when we talk about dropping something, that would imply the analysis type of mechanical event simulation because there is motion involved. And then whenever you do have some sort of impact or contact, we have a couple different ways to deal with that. If it's a part-to-part -part type of contact, then we're going to set up some surface-to-surface -surface contact, which we will do in this particular analysis between that cup and the shelf. And then another type of impact or drop that you could do would be some object onto a plane that is orthogonal to one of the axes. And actually, you can set it up uh, in a user-defined orientation with 2013 as well. So we're going to combine both of those elements in this particular model. That is, having two objects impact one another. And then we'll also show you how to add an impact plane into it. On our last slide here, what are our key learning objectives? how to set the appropriate analysis type. Again, we're going to want to utilize mechanical event simulation because there is motion involved. How do we set the surface-to-surface -surface contact between that cup and the shelf or ledge? And then how do we set up the impact plane? That would be the, the gray rectangular, rectangular looking patch that you see in that image there. How do we set up the load curve for our analysis? And then what about reviewing the results? So we'll go ahead and get started with our model right now. OK, so we have our assembly here inside Inventor Fusion. What I'm going to do is push this assembly into the simulation environment. So I'm going to go ahead and select the button for Simulation Mechanical. OK, as the assembly comes into the environment, one of the first things it's going to ask is, what sort of analysis type are we running? And again, because we are dropping something, because there's motion involved, what we want to utilize is a MES, Mechanical Event Simulation. If I go to the flyout on the right-hand side there, of course, you have your options of linear. So you have a static stress. In that case, it's presuming something is stat statically stable. And then some of your dynamic modules below that, vibration, frequency response in that category, uh, random vibration, et cetera. Again, we're going to choose an MES with nonlinear material models. The MES there telling us that we can have motion. So I'll say OK. Now that my assembly is inside the environment, we can begin to set up our analysis. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the mesh panel. We're just going to say generate a 3D mesh. We're going to accept the defaults, which will go ahead and surface mesh this. It is going to expect that ultimately we're going to have brick elements. Once the meshing is complete, I'm going to say no to viewing the mesh results. And we can go to define the materials. So my first part, part number one, is the green part. That's our shelf right there. I'm going to select the material of a concrete. So we'll go into the element material. I'm going to select concrete. And we'll take a medium strength there. And then for the cup itself, I'm going to define as a type of plastic. Edit the material. If I go into the plastic category, we're going to take an LDPE, and we'll say, OK. I don't know how many of you out there are parents, but my kids are constantly dropping their cups, which is the inspiration for the model. OK, now that we have that defined, we can go on to our uh, different types of loads and our different types of constraints. So one of the things that I wanted to do was to add an impact plane uh, into this particular analysis. So you can see that I have the cup positioned a little bit above this shelf. So when we do our drop, we're going to add gravity to it. The cup's going to drop down, obviously come into contact with the little shelf here. And you can see that I have it positioned so that it's kind of going to teeter off the edge of that uh, shelf or ledge. So we want to give it something below the parts that we physically modeled for it to impact. So going to the Setup tab, I can go to Impact Planes, and I can define a new impact plane. And again, an impact plane is just something that is uh, in the environment there that is a, a wall or a barrier. It has really no, uh, what do you want to say to it? Really no end as far as what its dimensions are. It can scale that thing out depending upon the size of your geometry. 
So if I go to the pull down menu here, you can see the different impact planes. What we want, looking at the mini axis, and perhaps I should move out of the way a little bit there, you can tell from the mini axis there that what we want is an XZ plane. So I'm going to choose an XZ plane. And we have to tell it where that thing is oriented. So the very bottom of this shelf here has a Y coordinate. You can see that Y is my vertical direction based on the mini axis here. Uh, we're going to use an offset and set our impact plane at four inches below the bottom of our, our green shelf or ledge there. And then what sort of type do we want? Do we want it to be able to slide but not bounce? or your other option there is fully general. So we're going to choose a fully general. So as this cup comes down and hits that impact plane, if it needs to slide, it's going to slide. If it needs to bounce, it's going to bounce. So we're just going to let it do everything that it may. We'll say OK to that. And now you can see the impact plane uh, right there inside the environment. Also a new addition for 2013. Uh, prior to 2013, you will only see that inside the results environment. OK. So how about uh, we add some constraints to the bottom of this plate so that plate doesn't just drift off in the space. So I'm going to go into my selection menu. I'm already on a point or rectangle select and I'm selecting surfaces. And I'm going to select the bottom surfaces on that plate. And I'll right click, add, and I'm going to add surface general constraints to fully fix it. And we'll leave the cup uh, fully free to do what it may. So we're not going to add any constraints to uh, to the cup. So we have our floor here, so that's kind of our, our mm, what do you want to say, the infinite uh, barrier so that the cup can't drop any further below. What we do need to define yet would be the gravity, what's going to motivate the cup, and then also what about the contact between these two parts? What's going to make these two parts interact? By default, the program doesn't know that one part's supposed to contact the other. It is your responsibility to define this is where I think uh, the objects are going to come into contact or what might come into contact during the analysis. A new feature for 2013 that we can also take advantage of uh, would be the groups. So you'll notice as I hover over top of the surfaces of the plate here that I've broken out a specific region on the plate. Specifically, I took a one inch by one inch section in the CAD model and I split that so I can say this area here is potentially one of the surfaces that's going to come into contact. And there's a couple other surfaces here on that plate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just select those three surfaces holding my control key down and I'll group those together. So I'm just going to right click. I'm going to say selection group and I'll make that a new group, create new group. So now I'll click off of the plate. So that's all the surfaces I'm concerned with for contact on that plate. What about the cup itself? I'll take the bottom surface of that cup You'll see that I have a little radius at the bottom of the cup. So I'll go ahead and select my control key to select that as well. And then the side surface or cylindrical outside surface of the cup as well. Uh, those are the potential surfaces for contact between the cup and the plate. So I'll right click. I'm going to create a new selection group there, create new group. So what has that done for me? If I go over to the menu tree here, you'll see that my selection groups are now listed in the menu tree. I want to create contact between those two. How do I do that? I can just select those two, right click and say create contact. You don't absolutely have to set up contact groups. I think it makes this model a little bit easier to work with, but you can set it by part. So you could say part one might contact part number two. A uh, lot of overhead with a lot of different elements, particularly if you have a larger model. You can take it to the individual surface levels. So you could say part one surface one might contact part two surface two, for instance. I'm going to go ahead and set it up between these two surface groups we defined. So I'll select one of those surface groups, control select the other. I'm going to right click and say contact and we're going to define a surface contact. So now just with that the program is going to be looking for surface contact between these two. I'm going to edit one parameter of that. You can see now that the surface contact uh, pair has been added to my menu tree. I'm going to right click there and I'm going to go into its settings. Look for another video on all the specifics, the details of surface to surface contact. But for this specific example, the only thing I'm going to change right here is I'm going to change this from a low speed type of contact. They give you a for instance there of press fit. We're going to change that to a high speed or impact type of contact. We'll say OK. And the last thing that we need to do before we set up our run would be to define the uh, gravity. What's going to motivate it? So I'm going to go to Setup, I'm going to go into Parameters, 
in parameters for the duration of our analysis, it's going to be a fairly quick event that this thing drops onto the plate, uh, falls off the edge of that plate, and hits our impact floor. So I'm going to set the duration to a half second, and I am going to increase the number of steps. We're going to make the number of steps, say, 100 steps per second. Uh, one other thing that I would note about this is new for 2013 is you have the ability to add rows. So we could define different segments of time and say for the first uh, half of a second I want X number of steps and then for the next uh, half of a second I want to increase or decrease that number of steps. So having an idea of what's going to happen when during your event you can focus a higher number of steps to capture that detail of what's happening at that point in the analysis. We'll go over to load curves the only load that we're going to have is gravity, so I'm going to make that constant throughout our analysis. So at time zero, I'm going to give it a multiplier of one times the gravity, and then at a half second, also a multiplier of one. Let me go into gravity acceleration tab. I'm going to say set for standard, or we're going to put gravity in the minus y direction, and zero at the z. Okay. And with that, I believe that we are all ready to execute the analysis, so we'll go ahead and get the analysis started. First thing it's going to do is solid mesh that model, and as soon as the solid meshing of those two parts is completed, you will see the analysis window come up, and it'll begin to execute that analysis. Okay, so here we are in the results environment. The analysis has executed, and we can see that our cup has fallen off the impact and fallen off the shelf and has now hit the impact plane. So we're taking a look at displacements first. Uh, on the results contours tab, in the section for load case options, you have the back and forwards button so you can advance through the load cases that way. So if we go all the way back to the very first uh, step in our analysis, then we can just advance by hitting the next button a couple times. Or just to the right of that under the capture section, you also see that there's a, a start animation, so I think that might be one of the easiest ways to review the results. There's our impact between the cup and the shelf, and you can see it sliding off the edge there. And coming down, there's the impact of the front of the cup to the impact plane and the bottom. All right. So successfully done. Of course, as that animation plays, you can rotate the model around a little bit. Notice also from this view, you can see it pretty well that the impact plane as well, at first the, the visual of that impact plane just scales itself based on the size of the model. And then of course as the dimensions of our model changes, i.e. that cup is moving off to the side, the impact plane also is resizing itself just so uh, you can see that the impact plane will, will capture or catch it. You can change views, orient the model around a little bit changing with the view cube so you can see exactly how it impacts and how it contacts. You can change results type. So if I go into say von Mises stress, we can see what the stresses are. Oh, that's still in displacement. Sorry, let me change that. There we go. So if I change into a von Mises stress and I just start that animation again, there you can see these stresses from impact. Uh, there's the bottom of the cup touching the corner as it comes into contact and out. And then free fall and boink, a little bit into the impact plane. All right, so of course everything else that you can do within the results environment, you could select a node, you can graph the displacement of that node with respect to time. Um, what if we go with, um, how about we go with the displacement in the Y direction? And if I select a node on the top of that cup, I can right click and say uh, edit new graph. So there's the Y component of the displacement on that cup. And if I wanted to, we could say, let's take the first derivative so we can take a look at the velocity of that node with respect to time. Or we could even go into the second derivative and take a look at the acceleration of that node with respect to time. So a lot of interesting things you can do with it in the results environment. But in a nutshell, uh, that's the basics of how we're going to get that done. So let me go back to the model itself. I want to take a look at one last thing. Uh, with this particular model, we kept it kind of simple, so a two-part assembly, just a cup and, and, and a shelf, so that we could focus on really how do we set this up, what are the key elements to setting it up, and then of course you could extend this out to whatever your analysis might be. So even though we did something very simple, 
the methodology is the same whether that happens to be a cup or whether it happens to be a cell phone or some sort of laptop whatever you're doing you still need to select the surfaces that might come into contact and create that contact so in closing from this presentation our summary don't forget to utilize MES for analyses that include large-scale motion whenever you're dropping anything or have something moving. You can utilize surface contact and impact planes as well. You can include both in an analysis or just one or the other, whichever best suits your needs. And don't forget the ability to leverage showcase to create highly contextual results imagery. Thanks for watching this Simulation TV presentation.